Hi everyone, Searing Frost here in the Python library. Today, we'll be checking out the LXML library, which is a third-party library for working with XML. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, and it's a base for defining other markup languages. HTML is the most well-known XML, being the basis for all web pages. Python has a standard XML library, but LXML has some nice features, such as full XPath support, and nice factory functions that make it a better choice. This video will go over not only LXML, but XML in general. The goal of LXML is to work with XML using the element tree API stored in lxml.etree. Every XML tag is an element in the tree, and each element contains a name and potentially attributes, child elements, and text. Element tree attributes work like Python dictionaries, and child elements are in a Python list. This allows for standard Python syntax to work seamlessly with eTree elements. LXML can read from files or string objects of XML and parse them into eTree elements. Let's take this simple XML string and put it into an eTree element using the fromString function. Be sure to define the string as binary if you have the XML declaration tag. The store element refers to the root of our XML document. XML travels in string format, so the ability to transform LXML elements into strings is vital. Luckily, it is very simple with the toString function. toString just reverses the fromString function. We can choose the encoding and whether we want an XML declaration or pretty printing. The most effective way to search for XML elements is with XPath. XPath is fully implemented in LXML, and if you know what tags you are searching for, XPath is the way to go. Give the XPath expression to the element you wish to search using the element's XPath method. Note that the XPath method always returns a list of results, even if no elements or only one element is found. Let's use some XPaths on our store elements. We can get the store element by accessing it directly, or we can get all of the store element's children using a wildcard. Check the link in the video description for the W3Schools XPath tutorial if you aren't familiar with the XPath syntax. Searching can also be accomplished using iterators with the iterWalk class. iterWalk is part of eTree and it takes an element and iterates through the element's tree. The iterator returns tuples of events and elements. When elements are encountered, they can be mutated as needed. Let's iterate through the store, returning start and end events. We can see the text Searing Frost is changed to new name once it's encountered. LXML also makes it possible to build your own XML trees from scratch. After you start with a root element, the XML tree is built mostly with calls to etree.subElement. The subElement factory takes a parent element, tag name, an optional attribute dictionary, and extra keyword arguments if necessary. Let's recreate the store XML document using subElements. We will start with the store element, then inventory, then we can add the apples and oranges elements with their text. than the employee Searing Frost. It's just as simple as that. Finally, we're going to dig into namespaces with a fair amount of detail. Namespaces are an important part of XML, and LXML provides full utility to work with them. Namespaces are prefixes for tag names to avoid name clashes. They are defined by URIs, which are essentially more generic URLs, 
in that URIs do not need to describe how to locate a resource. Namespaces are defined in the attribute of XML elements, usually at the root level. Namespace declarations use a special attribute name, xmlns, colon, then the namespace, equals, and then the URI of the namespace. Remember, the URI doesn't necessarily have to point to anything real. It just needs to be unique so it doesn't clash with other namespaces. LXML uses fully qualified namespaces on eTree elements, and not just prefixes, in order to avoid ambiguity and make code easier to write. When the final XML document is serialized, it simply translates back into the prefix as expected. Let's look at how LXML works with namespaces. LXML stores namespaces in dictionaries in the nsmap attribute. We can see the nsmap matches the table we looked at earlier. And when we iterate through the tags in our XML, we see the tag and the prefix. To create XML elements with namespaces, you can add the fully qualified string as a tag, though this is a lot of typing. Using eTree.QName constructors, it's easy to build qualified names using your own namespace map. Thanks for joining me in the Python library to learn about LXML. XML is a complicated topic, and there are a lot of details with style sheets that need to be accounted for when working with complex elements. LXML will give you the tools to operate on XML, and we've gone over most of the tools you will need for 90% of your XML work. Links to the code and my blog post on LXML are in the description. I'll see everyone next time.